May the peace of the Father God and of the Lord Jesus Christ remain with us. Once again, a good day, good evening, whatever time we may be reaching the different parts of the world. We are once again thanking the Lord together with our brethren from the Church of God International. This evening, we have a good opportunity to continue our worldwide Bible study. With us is Brother Eli Soriano. Good day to you, Brother Eli. Good day, good evening, brethren, from all places, wherever you may be, even those who are tuned in, our guests who got our link. We are also greeting our critics, those who are um, waiting for what they can criticize. We are people who are all the same before God. We have battles, we have problems. Even if you're angry with us, I do understand that you are also human beings. May God have mercy on us all, even on our enemies. We are praying that the time will come when people will come to an understanding on a common ground, which is the word of God in the Bible. So let us be one in accepting it, even if it is against our own will. Let's start our topic. It is about the authenticity of the Bible. I want to read the verse, and I am inviting you. Even scientists and intelligent people. I am not a scientist, but I know a little of science. Brother Daniel, I want you to read Hebrews 11 verse 3. By faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. According to the Bible, the world. Practically the entire universe were made from things that are not seen. The material universe that can be seen was not made from things that can be seen. Things visible were not made from things visible, but the opposite is the truth. Things visible, things which are seen or which do appear were made from things that are not seen. Let us read that in English, Brother Daniel. which are seen were not made of things which do appear in other translations still in the revised standard version by faith we understand that the world was created by the word of god so that what is seen was made out of things which do not appear ah things that are seen meaning material thing was made out of things which do not appear, things which are not seen. Because physically and spiritually, dalawang bagay po ang umiiral. There are two things that exist, physical and spiritual. Physical meaning things that are seen and spiritual things that are not seen. Let us read that truth in the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be... Visible and invisible. Visible and invisible. There are two kinds of things that exist. Visible... And invisible, considered by others as spiritual. But not everything invisible is spiritual. 
But let us follow the, the ordinary thinking of humanity, visible and invisible. There are things which are visible, there are things which are invisible. And according to the Bible, merong mga bagay na nakikita, merong bagay na hindi nakikita. According to the Yung Bible, na- there are things that can be seen and things that cannot be seen. Now, the visible things, according to the Bible, came from invisible things. And because of that, I am impressed by the Bible. How was this understood by men 3,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago? When they had no knowledge yet about what we know now. For example, oxygen can be considered invisible but because it cannot be seen by the eyes. Smell it because it is odorless. And you cannot taste it because it is tasteless according to science. Ang oxygen po ay isang bagay na... Oxygen is something that is totally invisible to the human eyes and totally unperceivable by our senses. Why? You cannot perceive oxygen by our senses only. You will not feel it. Why? Because it has no taste. Part is um, bad smelling, so you smell it. Oxygen has no smell, so you don't see it. It has no taste, so you will not taste it. What the Bible is saying is correct. There are things that cannot be seen, like oxygen, other gases. And there are things that cannot be seen. So I am impressed. I am amazed by the Bible. So whether educated or not, pay attention because you will understand this. You do not see oxygen, but you will get to see it. Things that can be seen were made from invisible things. So the Bible is really correct. Why? Oxygen cannot be seen. One molecule of oxygen, if combined with two molecules of invisible hydrogen, it will bring out water. Two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen will make water. So now you can see it, but as oxygen, you don't see it. So how did Paul knew that 2,000 years ago when men didn't know about oxygen yet? Men didn't know yet about the different kinds of gases, but there's already a definition of oxygen, a correct definition. And that is where I have established my faith in the word of God. As a boy, I liked science. I said, what the Bible is saying is really correct. When God created Adam, it says in Genesis 2 verse 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Look at what the Bible is saying. It is the breath of life. In Hebrews, it is ruach. Ruach, a current of air. In other translations, it is a spirit. When Adam was created, God breathed into his nostrils. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That is the simple definition. The breath of life is oxygen 
a current of air or ruach that gives life. And that is correct. Remove oxygen and man will not leave. In fact, those that get punished in America and are put in the gas chamber, there are gases in that chamber, different kinds of gases, but you will die there. One thing we are sure of, there is no oxygen there because oxygen is the breath of life. When you are deprived of oxygen, scientifically, in only five minutes that you don't have a proper supply of oxygen, some parts of your brain will die. A very primitive term, hininga ng buhay. So the Bible is using a very primitive term, breath of life or air, or gas of life. The Bible speaks the truth, which cannot be denied in our modern times. The word oxygen is not in the Bible because the word oxygen was coined when oxygen was discovered. When was oxygen, or the existence of oxygen, was discovered? Brother Daniel, let us read this. 1774. Oxygen discovered Carl in 1774. Williams. Carl Wilhelm Steele, Antoine Lavoisier, in Uppsala in 1773 or earlier, and Joseph Priestley in Wiltshire in 1774. But Priestley is often given priority because his publication came out in print first. The name oxygen was coined in 1777 by Antoine Lavoisier, whose experiments with oxygen helped to discredit the then popular phlogiston theory of combustion and corrosion oxygen is produced industrially by fractional distillation of liquefied air, use of zeolites to remove carbon dioxide and nitrogen from air electrolysis of water and other means. Uses of oxygen include the production of steel, plastics, and textiles, rocket propellant, oxygen therapy, and life support in aircraft, submarines, space flight, and diving. Oh, na discovery po ang oxygen. 1770. Oxygen was discovered in 1774. Why do we understand now that there is oxygen? Because they have seen that there are different kinds of gases. There is nitrogen, carbon dioxide, methane, carbon monoxide. Though I don't know everything, but there are different kinds of gases. Gas cannot be seen. If I study the words of God in the Bible, it says the things that are seen are made from things that are not seen. And the Bible is very correct. This was written by St. Paul 2,000 years ago. Who would have thought that what St. Paul had written would be proven 2,000 years after? That visible things are made from invisible things. Why? Oxygen cannot be seen. Hydrogen cannot be seen. The entire universe is composed of 60% of hydrogen. Element, if we can call the it most element. common element, if we can call it element, in the entire universe according to science is hydrogen, which makes up about three-fourths of all matter. So wherever you go in the universe, there's hydrogen. Now, if you combine hydrogen with another gas, which is oxygen, you will be able to produce water. So
So when they were not yet combined, they were invisible. They were both gases. But when they were combined, water came out. So now you can see the water. You can see water as vapor. It's called water vapor. You can see water as liquid, like water in rivers and in seas. You can also see it as solid, like in Alaska, in the South Pole, in the North Pole, it is ice. So there are three states of water made up of two unseen elements, hydrogen and oxygen. When those two are combined, they produce visible matter. So the Bible is very correct. The entire universe was made from invisible things. The visible things came from invisible things. Let us read that in six languages, 11 verse 3. Kalibutan, tungod sa pulong sa Diyos. Sa Through faith, nga, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Did you see those words of the Bible? If you don't believe in the Bible, then you're hard-headed. You are hard-headed. You do not believe in the truth. The word of God said 2,000 years ago, the things which are seen like rocks, the soil, sand, everything you can see, plants, trees, etc. All these things were made from things that are unseen. And it is true. Why? You cannot see oxygen. You also cannot see hydrogen. But when you put the two together, through the combination of two atoms of Hydrogen and of oxygen, you can produce something that can be seen. One more thing that scientists are busy about is what they call black matter that exists in the entire universe. These are not visible even to telescopes, but these are called black matter because they couldn't see it. That is the reason why they put the Large Hadron Collider. They're looking for dark matter, which they call God's particle. They believe that there is something smaller than the atom, the nucleus, that cannot be seen. And that is the source of visible things through chemical reaction, through proper combination. And it is true. I do believe that as simple as my knowledge of science, combine two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, you will produce water. Combine two hydrogen atoms with two oxygen atoms, you will produce what we call hydrogen peroxide. H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide. So you will see that planets came from gases that are invisible. 
scientists have discovered that Saturn, the planet Saturn that is very big and it has rings around it, it's all gas. It is called the gas giant. When you go there, there is no solid particle that you can land on. From so let us read this information from brother scientists. Saturn is a gas giant. Saturn is not solid like Earth, but is instead a giant gas planet. It is made up of 94% hydrogen, 6% helium, and small amounts of methane and ammonia. Hydrogen and helium are what most stars are made of. Can you stand on Saturn? The density and temperature changes the deeper into the planet you go. But Saturn can't be said to have a solid surface. If you tried to walk on the surface of Saturn, you would fall into the planet, suffering higher temperatures and pressures until you are crushed inside the planet. Did you see that? This is a planet that can be seen, and scientists are looking at it. But it came from invisible gases. What are those gases? 94% hydrogen and 6% helium and small amounts of methane and ammonia. So what the Bible is saying is correct. Visible things were made from invisible things. One thing that cannot be seen is gas, like hydrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, etc. So who will oppose that which is in the Bible, which, is ex which expresses the truth even before science understood or learned? Think of it. Atheists who do not believe in God, They insult the Bible, saying that it was written by goat herders in the Bronze Age. They have their abominable way of destroying the Bible. And connivance with other scientists, which I do not want to call scientists, like Charles Darwin, Stephen Hawking, etc. These are people with delusions who cannot accept the truth that the Bible tells us. They are mocking and insulting God. They call him stupid. They call those who believe in the Bible as stupid, but I dare you. All those that malign the Bible, look, even now you don't understand what is in the Bible. Science still does not understand what is in the Bible. And I will prove that using the Bible in true science. The Bible tells us things that are seen were not made from things which do appear, meaning things that are seen were created from things unseen. And it's very evident that this pronouncement of the Bible teaches us, gives us the guarantee that the Bible speaks the truth even before scientists have realized and discovered them. Things seen, things which do appear, were not made from things which do appear. They were made from things invisible. How come the Apostle Paul understood this scientific truth way back 2,000 years ago if the Bible is not authentic as the Word of God, if the Bible is just uh, written or the writers of the Bible were goats here there of the Bronze Age as uh, these atheists are atheist way of insulting the Bible? So what I was saying earlier, one more thing that they are studying now is the dark matter. Brother it's Daniel. a form of matter thought 
to account for approximately 85% of the matter in the universe and about a quarter of its total energy density. Most dark matter is thought to be non-baryonic in nature, possibly being composed of some as yet undiscovered subatomic particles. Dark matter is composed of particles that do not absorb, reflect, or emit light, so they cannot be detected by observing electromagnetic radiation. Dark matter is material that cannot be seen directly. We know that dark matter exists because of the effect it has on objects that we can observe directly. I want to repeat that particular uh, part of that declaration. Dark matter is material that cannot be seen, cannot be seen directly. We know that dark matter exists. They know, scientists know, scientists believe that dark matter exists because of the effects it has on objects that we can observe directly. The movement, the appearance of matters that are seen in space, according to scientists, proves that there are dark matters. Although dark matters, they call it dark matters, cannot be seen directly by the human eyes. It does not emit light, it does not reflect, it does not absorb, so they are totally unseen. They are totally unperceivable. But scientists believe that in this entire universe, 85% of materials in the universe are from dark matters. And that is true. Biblically speaking, even if they are not very sure now, they have not mastered that study about dark matter, I believe it is true, it is in the Bible. Because the Bible tells us that, ang sabi ng Biblia, ang bagay na nakikita. The Bible says that the visible things are, not, are made from invisible things, meaning planets, stars, constellations, galaxies, were made from invisible things. Visible things, are made from invisible things. The very clear proof, gas which cannot be seen, when two kinds of gases combine, a visible thing can be produced. One of the hardest matter existing in the world is the diamond. Now, what composes a diamond? How, how did diamond come about? Let us show that on the screen. What are the elements that compose a diamond? For us to prove that the things that can be seen came from invisible things. Brother Daniel, please read carbon chemistry diamond and derives diamond from crystal Greek structure. Adamao, meaning I tame or I subdue, or the related word adamas, which means hardest steel or hardest substance. Everyone knows diamonds are hard and beautiful. But did you know a diamond could be the oldest material you might own? While the rock in which diamonds are found may be 50 to 1,600 million years old, the diamonds themselves are approximately 3.3 billion years old. This discrepancy is because the volcanic magma that solidifies into rock where diamonds are found, did not create them, but only transported the diamonds from the Earth's mantle to the surface. Diamonds also may be formed under the high pressures and temperatures at the site of meteorite impacts. The diamonds formed during an impact may be relatively young, but some meteorites contain stardust, debris from the death of a star, which may include diamond crystals. One such meteorite is known to contain tiny diamonds over 5 billion years old. These diamonds are older than our solar system. Look at this report or account of scientists. Diamonds 
contain stardust, which dates about 5 billion years old. And what makes of a star? Weren't stars made from invisible gases like hydrogen? Because 60% of matter that we can see in the universe is hydrogen. The planet Saturn has 94% hydrogen and other gases. So all those are gases that are invisible, but these were able to produce a planet that can be seen. Saturn is not solid like the Earth, but it's instead a giant gas planet a giant gas planet made up of 94% hydrogen, which is invisible, 6% helium, which is also invisible because it is a gas. And small amounts of methane is also a gas. It cannot be seen. And ammonia. But these components, these gases, combined, they were combined, so now there's a planet you can see. What the Bible is saying is true. Visible things were made from invisible gases. The same thing with the diamond. It is a very hard matter, but who would have thought that it came from carbon? The matter that make up diamonds is mostly carbon. My point, why I am saying this, is to prove to you that the Bible is just speaking the truth. To a person who will belittle the Bible or curse the Bible and ignore what the Bible is saying, think it over. More so if, you're, if you believe that you are intelligent. You cannot deny it. The Bible calls it the breath of life and we call it oxygen. You cannot deny that it is the breath of life that God put into the nostrils of man. God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Moses didn't say and breathed into his nostrils oxygen. Why? People that time wouldn't understand. So the words he used were very fitting. The breath of life. Because there is a breath of death. There are gases that can kill a human being. Like the gases used in the gas chambers of America. There is what the Bible calls as the breath of life, which literally means oxygen that gives life to our bodies. So, atheists have a term, term for the Bible. They say it's an, a, a very outdated book. That's what atheists who do not believe in God call the Bible. They say that the Bible is outdated. But there are things in the Bible that you have not yet discovered even now. There are things in the Bible you have not yet discovered. And I'm waiting for them to be discovered. Oxygen was discovered in the 18th century, seven, in 1774. Oxygen has been in the Bible 2,000 or 3,000 years ago. The Bible already mentioned it as the life-giving breath or air from God. It exists in the Bible, proving that the Bible speaks the truth. The Bible is speaking the truth even before it is discovered by man. This is enough for me to believe that God exists and take away every doubt. How can any man 2,000 years ago define exactly what was discovered by science 2,000 years after their time? Here's more. I will go back to this verse. Just listen to Hebrews 
1 verse 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remain, and they all shall wax old as does a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. This was written in the Bible more than 3,000 years ago. We have a copy of manuscripts of the Bible that are almost 2,000 years old. So you cannot say this is a conspiracy or a cover-up or an invention. No. One of the oldest manuscripts of the Bible is at the British Library. It is called the Codex Sinaiticus. This was written in 330 to 360 AD. Well, the book is still there, but the pages are already very brittle. Good thing that every page was photographed. So this book is almost 2,000 years old, so the pages are already very brittle. Like the Dead Sea Scrolls, these were um, animal hide that had inscriptions. The Dead Sea Scrolls are more or less 2,200 years old, but we have copies of them, of the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, why am I saying this? My point, brethren, that which is stated in the Dead Sea Scrolls, in the Codex Sinaiticus, which is 1,700 years old, it is still there at the British Library in London, says these words, that the heavens and the things there, as God said, they will grow old like a garment like a garment that is being changed. Who would know this if this is not a revelation from God? These words have been in the Bible more than 3,000 years ago. That the things in heaven that God made grow old like a garment, they will be replaced. Look at... What they are showing now, like the discoveries of science in faraway places in the world, there are things that get replaced. There are collisions of galaxies, they explode and create new stars. There are new galaxies that exist now. Old galaxies, stars that explode, they create black holes. There's a collision of galaxies. By astronomers in our time. Now, these are proven by astronomers in our time. There are violent things happening beyond our galaxy or the Milky Way galaxy. In other galaxies, they see activities. There are very old stars, about 7 billion years old. They explode. First, they become red giants. And then they become neutron stars. And then they explode. If it's a very big star and it explodes, it will create a black hole. That is no longer a mystery these days. It was proven by science. When was this proven by science? Not even 50 years ago. Because when I was in high school, there were no black holes, black matter, nuclear things in my time.
only recently where black holes, black matter were discovered. From the Earth, no one can see the explosion of old stars because those are so far away. But now we have very powerful telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope and another one, which is called the JWST, James Webb Space Telescope. They're able to get details and happenings in far away galaxies. Sometimes there are sunbursts. Parts of the sun where there would be sudden flares that even cause uh, computers to malfunction on Earth. So even in far away galaxies, violent explosions happen, collision of galaxies, etc. And you will see that in accounts or reports of the NASA. They have documentaries, and you cannot say it is a lie. Only now are they discovering those things. But it was already in the Bible 2,000 years ago. There are things in heaven that explode, become old, and are replaced, etc. Let me repeat Hebrews 1 verse 10 for you to appreciate the word of God. And thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remain. And they all shall wax old as does a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. When I was a little child, I heard something that I didn't appreciate. Stars grow old. I do remember that song. Till then I'll worship you Till the tropic sun grows cold Till this young world grows old My darling, I'll adore you That is Perhaps the maker of the song didn't know the, about the black hole. That song was written in 1957 when I was only 10 years old. This was written in 1957. Black holes were discovered in 1967. The term black hole was coined in 1967 by the American ast astronomer John Wheeler. And the first one was discovered in 1971. There are three types of black holes, stellar black holes, supermassive black holes, and intermediate black holes. of something maybe in those times uh, can be considered scientific fiction. Till the moon deserts the sky Till all the seas run dry Till then I'll worship you The tropic sun grows cold Till this young world grows old My darling, I'll adore you Kita nyo ha? 
Ako, paniwala ko yung gumawa ng kanta na hindi alam yung black hole eh. Kasi I believe that the maker pa, of that song didn't know about the black holes. But that song can be considered in those times a science fiction. But now, scientists know that stars grow old. They can grow old. Why? Because of what science now tells us. Seven billion years of age? Sino nga nakakaalam nun nung araw? Who knew of those things in those days? Like man, the life expectancy of man is up to 120-130 years. You won't find any person now who is 200 years old. You won't expect that after 100 years old, you will live 100 years more. Nowadays, a man, a person is not yet 60 or 70 and he already dies. Like turtles, they have a longer life expectancy. And whales have also a longer life expectancy. But you won't find a whale that's a thousand years old. Like what swallowed Jonah, that they say there's no such thing. Well, stars also have a life expectancy. After 7 billion years, a very big star, which is millions of times larger than our sun, can turn into a red giant and then become a neutron star because it's already very old and then explode and create a black hole. That's what scientists have studied. And you will be amazed. They didn't know that stars exploded and they have not yet seen that in 1967. They have not yet seen any exploding star and we didn't have very powerful telescopes. There was no such thing yet in 1957, but it was already in the Bible 3,000 years ago. So will you not believe in the Bible, brother? If you don't believe, you are hard-headed or you don't want to accept the truth. One thing that the Bible is saying, and it is happening after thousands of years, prove that the Bible, there is someone who knows these things happening that man does not know. No man has reached the center of the galaxy or the nearest galaxy to us, the Andromeda galaxy, which is our neighboring galaxy, because there are many other galaxies far from us, 37 billion light years away. That which is close to us, we cannot see that there are explosions already. Although now with our modern technology, modern telescopes, we can already see. But 50 years ago, there was no such thing yet. But thousands of years ago, that was already in the Bible. It was already stated in the Bible, proving to us that the Bible speaks the truth. So atheists, do you still not believe? If you don't want to believe, then it's up to you. Suit yourself. I believe that those who use their brains those who have conscience, conscience, they are in their right minds. They would believe in the Bible because the Bi what the Bible is saying is really true. Even stars grow old. Planets grow old. Galaxies grow old. They explode. That is already in the Bible. Even before science discovered it. So... The Bible is amazing as a book. It is unparalleled in knowledge. Spiritually, materially, scientifically, 
the Bible is like no other. If you believe in the Vedas of the Hindus, then you're behind by thousands of years. That Vedas will not teach you anything good. It is going to teach you to worship cows, to worship animals. Isn't that backwards? You're a human being, you're wiser than cows, and then you're going to worship cows? That is the teaching of Vedas, of Hinduism. Now, the teaching of Buddhism are, are opinions of Buddha, whom they call enlightened, which I disagree with vehemently. How can you say that Buddha was enlightened? I'm speaking in religious terms. So you see, and I'm sorry to say this, what Buddhists believe are sayings of Buddha, which are against normal thinking. Let us put on the screen one of the sayings of Buddha. Buddha said, do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind on the present moment. It is wrong. In all aspects of life, it is wrong. Because the past teaches us what to do at the present moment and prepare us for what we are going to do or expect in the future. The past, the present, and the future is very important for our life on earth. That's why the book of the Bible have this insight. Let us read in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 19. Let us read, Brother Daniel. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. God commanded John to write the things past, which thou hast seen, things that happened in the past, and things which are present things, and things which shall be hereafter. The real intention of the Bible is to teach us the whole truth, knowing what happened and what is happening and what will happen. That is the thought of the creator of life. But the thought of Buddha is uh, as short as his understanding. Why? He said that concentrate the mind on present moment. Do not dwell in the past and do not dream of the future. A very loving father and mother, an expectant mother, thinks of what is going to happen on the day that she will deliver the baby. Even before the delivery of the baby, the father and the mother, a loving parents, think of the first is the name of their baby. And they are buying things which they are preparing for the future when the baby is delivered. They already buy the crib, the clothes, diapers. They don't have cloth diapers anymore, but cotton. Before I washed uh, cloth diapers of my nephews and nieces, they would poop there and you are going to wash their cloth diapers. After that, you use them again. But now they use disposable diapers, which they throw right away that cause clogging and cause problems. And those disposable diapers are made of plastic. They don't decompose. You have to wait many, many years for them to decompose. Now, if you're going to believe in Buddha, don't buy a crib. Don't prepare for your child. When he comes out, that's the only time you're going to think of what you're going to do. So is that the book that we will be proud of? I believe that the Bible supersedes every other book on earth. Why? It teaches us the value of the past. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let us read it. Let us read 1 Corinthians 10 verse 6. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. 
as history of the Israelites as a people, the Apostle Paul said, these things were our examples to the intent that we should not last after evil things as they also lasted. So yung mga ginawa, so the things that were done before by the Israelites, we should not do those things. Their hard-headedness. And in this time, the Bible says, John was told, write those things that you see and write the things which are to come. So there is a correlation between past, present, and future. That is not being taught by Buddha. He said that you should think only of the present. Don't think of the past, the day after tomorrow, or the future. Proving that according to the standards of the Bible, Buddha was not an enlightened man. I'm not saying this to attack anyone. I'm just saving you from error. I just want to save you from the ignorance of your acclaimed prophet. What I only want to say, brethren, the Bible is like no other. Because of the truth written in it, historically, scientifically, logical-wise, in every angle of the truth, we will see that the Bible is speaking the truth. This is not an ordinary book. This is a book containing the truth. Many thousands of years ago before man discovered it, proving that the Bible is authentic and it came from the one who knows everything that exists to his glory and to the glory of our God. So who are you going to believe? The Bible that contains the Word of God or evolution? That is the idea of Darwin 200 years ago. If you want to believe a principle that started 200 years ago about the evolution, about the primordial soup, about the Big Bang, it's up to you. You're free to do it. But did you study science? To prove by your own self that the Big Bang Theory is true, that the evolution is true? If evolution were true, why haven't they seen chimpanzees with short tails? Why haven't they found such a creature? Why do you call them the missing link? It's not a missing link. There is no link between humans and chimpanzees if you are studying science if you are curious about everything that exists look at what scientists say true scientists let us read the difference in the composition of man from chimpanzees according to the bible let us read the Bible first before proving it in science. In 1539 of 1 Corinthians, all flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. The Bible speaks of the truth. There were no microscopes during that time for you to see the fiber of the flesh. But the Bible tells us in advance that not all flesh are the same. The flesh of man is different from the flesh of beasts, from the flesh of birds and the flesh of fish, fishes. It is certainly true. Here is the examination of science. The human chromosomes are 46 in number. Chimpanzees have 48 chromosomes. Not only chimpanzees, but also other animals. There is a difference of only two chromosomes. But inside those two chromosomal differences between chimpanzee and humans, 
there are about 80 million different nucleotides proving that there are 80 million differences in their nucleotides contained in the two chromosomal differences between humans and chimpanzees. So where's your missing link? The, not missing. I have found the link that proves the Bible is authentic. Iba ang laman ng tao. Proves that the Bible is authentic. million different nucleotides within those two chromosomal differences uh, sa mga uh, katawan ng chimpanzee at saka ng tao. Sa Biblia kasi, nakasulat, In the Bible, what is written is, man was made by God directly from the dust of the ground. And there are scientific evidences to prove the authenticity of that biblical pronouncement that God made man out of the dust of the ground. Why? If you're going to look at the ground or the dust or the earth's crust, 49% of that is oxygen. The human body has 65% oxygen, further proving the authenticity of the Bible. Forming the body of Adam from the dust of the ground, God breathed into the nostrils of Adam extra oxygen, which is called by the Bible as the breath of life. It is a very conclusive fact that the human body came from the dust of the ground and not from chimpanzees. We have on our screen the composition of the human body, the elements on the earth's crust you can see that all the elements of the earth's crust or the dust of the ground are parallel in the truth of the composition of the human body this is correct science not the science of darwin and hawkins now if you choose to believe them it's up to you you want to believe in theory that's only 200 years old and even now it's still a theory for you to believe that man came from bacteria fungi one-celled plants and animals and then kept evolving and became chimpanzees will you believe that our being as marvelous as it can be came from an accident it came from the big bang from the primordial soup Though I don't have time now to discuss this further, but this was already proven by the true scientists. We cannot have come from, from uh, apes, from chimpanzees, from bacteria, spirogyra, bacteria. That is impossible. If that were true, why do we have bacteria even now? Why are there chimpanzees even now? If that were true millions of years passed and then it became man but why are there still chimpanzees now let me read to you the big bang theory the big bang theory has been accepted by a majority of scientists today not because of that i was already impressed why it theorizes that a large quantity of nothing how can you quantify nothing? How can you say a large quantity of nothing? A large quantity of nothing. How can you say it's a large quantity when it is nothing? A large quantity of nothing decided to pack tightly together. Who decided it? Each of them? All of them are leaders? Who decided in the first place, they are nothing. How can they decide? A large quantity of nothing decided to pack together and then explode outward into hydrogen and helium? Do you mean to say that hydrogen and helium came from nothing? From an explosion? Study all explosions in our time and do some experiments.
repeatedly in an explosion it's not helium or hydrogen that is produced most of the time when there are explosions it is because of combustible materials and hydrogen is combustible it exploded and then hydrogen and helium were produced imagine nothing decided to pack tightly together and then decided afterwards to explode into hydrogen and helium this gas is said to have flowed outward through frictionless space that is unacceptable how can you say that there exists a frictionless space how can that be frictionless wherever there is matter or gases you cannot say it is frictionless where matter abounds there's always friction so that theory of the big bang about frictionless space so that outflowing gas cannot stop or slow down in what manner were the planets and the stars created that they cannot stop and then eventually form stars, galaxies, planets, and moons? Well, you can believe your theory. That is against the Bible. What is in the Bible is that there is a creator of heaven and earth and everything that is therein. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It does not say, in the beginning, there was a big bang. Do you mean to say that everything started from an accident? the glorious cosmos the exactness of the movements of galaxies stars and planets that provide our opportune place the habitable place we exist not because of water and food we exist on this earth because it is in the right place in the universe and it is maintained by the exact pool of gravity that holds the earth in its place and the pool of gravity from the sun, from other planets in the solar system. These things are all exact. So how can this be the product of the Big Bang or an accident? So when it comes to facts, not fiction, not theory until now the big bang theory is a theory the evolution is still a theory you cannot get all scientists to approve that this is a fact no there are more intelligent scientists that do not believe in the big bang nor in the evolution theory the big bang is not true the evolution theory is not true there are marvels in the bible that science cannot explain